Hello everyone. So today we're going to go learn how to graph rational functions. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, so go ahead and try this um, problem out. And I want you to find me the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And if you do not remember how to remember the x-intercepts, the zeros is when you set the function equal to zero and solve for x. And when you find the y-intercepts is when it touches the y-axis, when x is zero, uh, you substitute x equals zero. So go ahead and pause the video and give these a try. Okay, so hopefully you were able to get that. If I wanna find my x-intercepts, aka my zeros, I can go ahead and see that this function is in fact third form. So I can get each individual parentheses, right? x minus three and x plus two and set it equal to zero. So here I solve for this, this gives me three, right? Because if I add three, add three, I get um, x equals three. And if I subtract two, subtract two, x is equal to negative two. So these are my x-intercepts. So nothing that bad, right? x-intercepts, x equals three, and x equals negative two. To find my y-intercepts, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is substitute x equals zero. So that isn't that bad. We're gonna go ahead and see that this right here, I have my function x minus three, x plus two. And if I substitute a zero into um, each x, I got zero minus three and zero plus two. So negative three times two equals negative six. That is my y-intercept. Um, y equals negative six, or if you want to put it as a point, zero, negative six, okay? So let's go ahead and continue. All right, so looking ahead at this week, we're at uh, Monday the 14th, and uh, we'll be learning how to graph rational functions today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. So slowly we're gonna build up to uh, our slanted uh, asymptotes, but as of right now, we're just learning how to how it works, right? All right, so let's go ahead and continue. Okay, so pretty much our objective is to go ahead and graph these rational functions, find their characteristics like x and y intercepts, what we just talked about, discontinuities like uh, holes um, and the vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and eventually be able to decide their end behavior. So let's begin. Okay, um, some expectations this is for my students that are learning live with me um, for our expectations. Okay, so go ahead and pause right here and um, go ahead and see that these are the notes of a rational function. Okay, so what is a rational function? Well, it's pretty much a function, a polynomial to be exact, a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. So something I want you to think about when you think about a fraction is that you can't divide by zero. Therefore, this Q of X cannot be equal to zero or else you have some vertical asymptotes and we'll talk about them right now. So pretty much your domain will be all real except for whatever causes the q of x, the function in the denominator, equals to zero. So pretty much remember that you can have a number on top. I'm sorry, you cannot have a number on top divided by zero. That is undefined as of right now. Until we learn limits and we learn other stuff. But you can have zero divided by a number, right? Zero pizzas divided by three people. No, it's still zero because it was zero pizzas divided by three people. You so very, very careful on that. So I would actually write this down on your notes as well. All right, let's get started. So I want you to go ahead and tell me what are the discontinuities that Q of X has? So remember, Q of X is a denominator. So what numbers can I not have in the denominator because it will cause a discontinuity? So go ahead and take a couple seconds to give me those numbers. So remember, we cannot have q of x equal to zero. It's not possible. So therefore, we get the denominator to find out what are those values. And we got x minus 2 equals to zero and x plus 5 equals to zero. So what I want you to know here is that um, um, these numbers, once we solve for them, they'll give us the exact value that causes Q of X to be zero. So in this case, 
x equals 2 and x equals negative 5 will cause will cause a discontinuity so we're going to have all real except when x equals 2 and x equals negative 5 because when we do that um, we will divide right we will divide whatever numbers by 0 and we'll have undefined okay Okay, so what I want you to write next, and hopefully you guys enjoy this meme, uh, what I want you to write next is this right here. So pretty much this is a little cheat sheet that I have, um, and it helps you find the holes, x-intercepts, and vertical asymptotes. So if x, if all of this is in factored form, and you have two, you have two factors, like let's say this right here, x plus three, x plus three, if they're the same on top and in the bottom, those are holes. If you have just a factor in the numerator, that is an x-intercept. And if you have a factor in the denominator, that is a vertical asymptote. So pretty much what we just talked about was a um, vertical asymptote. That's why it was not included in the domain. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and write a couple of examples right here. So a hole look like this. So like, let me go ahead and x plus three on top, x plus three. Um, and then, I don't know, something x minus 7, x plus 2. Oops, I we can't really see that. But what I want you to see is that um, you have an x plus 3 on top, x plus 3 in the bottom. That's where the holes come from. So you would have a hole once you solve for that for, um, once you solve for that in terms of x. So you have x plus 3 equals 0. So x equals negative 3 is your hole. Hole at x equals negative 3. And this term right here, would tell you x equals 7 is your x-intercept. And this right here, uh, I know you guys probably can't see that, but it's an x plus 2. So x equals negative 2 would be your vertical asymptote. So go ahead and take a couple seconds to give me these solutions. So tell me x-intercept, tell me the y-intercept, tell me the whole, tell me the vertical asymptote. So go ahead and give that a try. Okay, and I'll go ahead and write this, that if you need to find the y-intercept, you substitute x equals zero pretty much saying f of zero um, we're gonna see is there any terms any factors that repeat on top and on bottom so exactly the same well no so there's no holes or no removable discontinuities do i have a term on top well this term on top is my x intercept so x plus one equals zero Subtract one, subtract one, x equals negative one. X equals negative one. My y-intercept, um, my y-intercept is found by substituting zero into all my numbers. So it's gonna be zero plus one, right? This function right here, f of zero. And then I got zero minus two times zero plus five. So it's one, negative two times five. So my y-intercept, is y equals one on top and negative 10 at the bottom. Or you can say negative one tenth, that works as well. Or if you wanna go ahead and give me the location, x is zero, y is negative one tenth. Okay. Do we have any vertical asymptotes? Well, according to our cheat sheet, that is the factors um, in the denominator. So we're gonna see that there, we actually have two. So vertical asymptotes um, at x equals, well, if this is x minus two equals zero, that must mean x equals two. And at, um, we have x plus five equals zero, so x must be equal to negative five. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so what is our domain? Well, that must be the all real, except for when we have x equals two, and x equals negative five. Because that's when the graph will go ahead and avoid these asymptotes. Okay, the next thing I want you to go ahead and think about is horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so same, very similar to how we do um, vertical, but now we look at the degrees, right? So the degree on top is n, um, and the degree in the bottom is m as in Mary. So Nancy versus Mary. Okay, so what I'm referring to here is you're looking at the degree of the polynomial on top 
and you compare it to the degree of the polynomial in the bottom, okay? So let's go ahead and begin. So if the degree is bigger on top, right? It's bigger on the numerator than the denominator. What I want you to know is that you have no horizontal absentope. Lucky for us, right? Well, actually, once you find out later, you're actually not gonna be so happy about that. But in this case right here, we don't know about slants yet, but in, if the top is bigger, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. Um, and I'll be more specific once we're learning um, slanted and obliques, okay? This one right here, when n and m, are the degrees are the same on top and on bottom, these are actually my favorite, means when the horizontal asymptotes will be y equal the ratio of a over b, okay? So what the heck does that mean? Well, think about it like this. If you were to have a two x squared over two, oh, I'm sorry, let's say four x squared, um, you can go ahead and see that these are the same term. They both rise at the same slope, if you will. Um, so I'm left with two over four. So I'm just left with the coefficients and I know this reduces to so one half. Um, so therefore, that would be your ratio of A over B. Um, and um, let's say it's bigger in the bottom. Okay, that's the last case. Um, this one tends to confuse students a bit, but uh, don't fear. Like I, I pretty much present it as you are dividing a pizza with your friend. Okay, so let's say you're dividing a pizza, right? Um, just uh, you and your friend. Hopefully you're able to see that this is pretty equal, right? 50% for both of you. Um, picture's not the scale, right? <laughs> uh, so pretty much you can see that if you're dividing the, right, the pizza, right? The one over two, you're left with 50%, right? Let's say we invite another friend. You know what, let's invite two more friends. Now we go ahead and divide it equally. We can see that there is a uh, slice per each person. But what is happening to my original slice? Well, if I didn't share with anyone, I would have a whole pizza. Then I sh shared with one friend, then I went 50%, then I shared with two more people, then I'm 25%. Um, and uh, it goes on, as I'm saying, I go ahead and share with more people. So um, we're gonna go ahead and see, I'm gonna go ahead and share with eight people. Um, so I can divide this as a nice picture. Um, and you can see that our pizza slices, right? went ahead and became smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, the same thing goes if I go ahead and share with more people, right? If I go ahead and would share all the people in the um, RGV, right? I can go ahead and see that my slice of pizza would probably, probably get so, so tiny. And if I go ahead and share with everyone in Texas, you could probably see that my slice of pizza will be so, so tiny. Uh, the kids in class were saying that it would be pretty much crumbs. So what am I trying to say, right? What am I trying to say other than me trying to share a pizza? Well, what I'm trying to say is that the same thing will happen. My horizontal asymptote will go to zero. Y equals zero to be exact. And the reason I say so is when you are rising to a very, very, very large number uh, in your denominator, right? If you're going um, really, really um, big on your denominator, way at a faster rate than your numerator, the same thing's happening to your pizza. Your slice of pizza is getting so, so, so small that it will become zero. So that's what I want you to know. So three cases. <clears throat> numerator is, um, I'm sorry, the degree in the top numerator is bigger. So you have no horizontal asymptote, check for obliques. Um, the horizontal is, I'm sorry, the numerator and denominator have the same degree, check for the ratio. And if it's bigger in the denominator, um, your pizza is crumbs, <laughs> and that will be your y equals zero, okay? So go ahead and pause this, and I want you to go ahead and try to find these, um, these horizontal asymptotes. So go ahead and try these for yourself. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. I have the degree on top. Right, the degree of the polynomial here is a two, and the degree in this polynomial is also a two. So according to this, I'm using this case, which tells me a over b. 
So my A, right, over my B, so this is two over one, which is just two. So y equals two. This is my horizontal asymptote. Okay. Then my next uh, scenario, let's go ahead and try this one. My degree on top is three and my degree in the bottom is two. So the degree on top is three, the degree in the denominator is two. So we can see that my numerator, right, my n, my n is bigger than my m. So that's the first scenario. And that will be that there is no horizontal asymptote because it's rising way faster in my numerator. Okay, the next one says, um, what happens when it is bigger in my denominator, right? My degree in the numerator is one, my degree in the denominator is two. So we can see that it's bigger in my uh, denominator. So remember my pizza is getting way bigger, right? Um, I'm sharing with more and more people. So my y equals zero, my horizontal asymptote, whoops, horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Okay, these are all the steps, guys. Um, I pretty much wrote them out. Um, so go ahead and pause here in case you need to write them, but most of this we have already written down. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some examples. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to know is that not all the time will they be factored out for you. Um, so I have x squared and the denominator x squared minus 16 is not factored yet. So let's go ahead and attack that first. The same thing as saying x squared cannot be uh, factored anymore, so it's going to be like that. x squared of minus 16 is a difference of squares. Hopefully you caught that. So it's x plus 4. Okay, so we have all of this. So this is what our factor form looks like. They're exactly the same, um, so don't stress about it. Okay, let's go ahead and try the next one. And it says to find our domain. Well, let's find that last um, and our x-intercepts. Well, our x-intercepts, if we remember our little cheat sheet, x-intercepts, these were vertical asymptotes. And if they had the same term right here, these were holes, right? Alrighty, so let's go ahead and see that our x-intercepts come from the numerator. So we get our numerator and we set it equal to zero. So we got um, x squared equals zero. So therefore something squared that equals zero must be zero. So x equals zero, that's my x-intercept, okay? My y-intercept is when I substitute zeros into every x, right? When I evaluate f of zero, and it's going to be 0 squared over 0 squared minus 16. Or you could have done this one as well. And it gives you the same thing. Um, that's still uh, 0 pizzas divided by 16 people. Negative 16 people, it doesn't matter. It's still 0, so y equals 0. Also, you could have seen that this point right here is in the origin. Um, so you could have seen that it's going to be 0, 0. Are there any holes? Do you see any terms repeating? Well, I got x minus 4, x plus 4 x squared, so no, but you would have had a hole if this would have been an x plus four or something. You could see that this is the same, but in this case, we do not. So there's none on our holes. How about vertical asymptotes? So that's where they come from, the denominator. So we can get to see that they're right here. So we have a vertical asymptote at x minus four equals zero and x plus four equals zero. So we just solve for that x equals four and x equals negative 4 are my vertical asymptotes, x equals plus or minus 4. Let's go ahead and draw them. 1, 2, 3, 4. And these right here, it's my x equals 4. My vertical asymptote, that's an up and down. And my 2, 3, negative 4 also has a vertical asymptote. Alrighty. How about horizontal asymptotes? Do we have any? Well, let's check the degrees, right? I can see that I got a degree of two in the numerator, a degree of two in the denominator. So they're the same, so I'm gonna take the coefficients, which is one and one. And we can see that this is a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Horizontal is left and right. Y equals one. Alrighty, so um, let's go ahead and fill out the rest. So. We have this right here. Um, 
and we're gonna go ahead and sketch this out. So I have a horizontal asymptote blocking me from going up. I got vertical asymptotes to my left and to my right. So my only logical option is to go ahead and go right here. So you're probably thinking, well, how come you're not going up? Well, remember the, the asymptotes make it very difficult for our graph to um, go ahead and cross. M majority of the time they will not cross uh, the, I'm sorry, let me clarify that. Majority of the time they won't cross the horizontal only in spe special occasions, but they will never pass the, they will never cross the vertical unless they go under or above it, okay? Um, so we have a nice pretty graph here, but we don't have the complete graph. So what I want you to know is that there's still some sort of graph um, here. So let me go ahead and get a laser. There's still some sort of graph here beyond this uh, negative four, and there's more graph to the right the, past the four. So what I want you to do is pick a, pick a number, uh, any number that is greater than four, right? Because we want to know what's uh, happening here on the right. And I lost my pen. So pick a number. So I like 105. And pick a number to the left of negative four, right? This is x equals negative four. Pick a number to the left of negative four. Uh, sure, 105 works for me. And what you're going to go ahead and do is you're going to substitute it back into your function. I don't care if it's the, the factored form or the original. And you're just going to substitute. What's going to happen when you go ahead and substitute into these? And what I want to know is the val not the value, but the sign. Is it positive? Is it negative? If the sign is positive, then it's above the x-axis. If the sign is negative, then it's below the x-axis. In this case, above the 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 y x the um, y equals one. In this case, so I know 105 is a huge number. If I square that, I probably don't know it off the top of my head, but I only care for the sign. So that's why I use that very large number. I could have used 573 if I wanted to, because I only care about the sign. Hopefully that makes sense. So I don't want you to put it in your calculator and be like, oh. I'm gonna go ahead and see what 105 squared is. It doesn't matter, guys. We could have picked five if we wanted to do that. But in this case, we don't. So I'm gonna use this one because it looks nice. So um, it says x squared over x squared minus 16. And I'm gonna substitute uh, my 105, 105 squared over 105 squared minus 16. That's probably gonna be a positive number. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and see that um, it, I don't care if it's a fraction, it's still a positive number, right? It's gonna be positive. So therefore it's gonna exist on the positive side. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and do the next part. Uh, negative 105 is squared, and then 105 is also squared minus 16. So very, very similar. This is still gonna be a, a positive of number. So it's still gonna be like so. So let me go ahead and highlight the solution. So our answer is this right here. And this right here. And this right here. Super cool, right? <clears throat> so we're, if we were to graph it, we will actually see something very, very similar to this. Okay. Um, what is the domain is, well, how far left can we go? Well, we can go as far left as we want except when we get to negative four, we have vertical asymptotes, so negative four must be a union, and then continue from negative four all the way to four, then union from four to infinity. The range, well, we can be all real except when x, um, when x is on uh, one, right? So it's gonna be, I'm sorry, when y is one. So it's gonna be from negative infinity all the way to the max the y the x value goes to which in this case is zero right because at this point right here my y is zero then it continues there's a gap it continues from one to infinity all the way up i'm talking about this right here okay all righty let's go ahead and try another one um another one let's get dj Khaled open here all righty so um we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. So it's gonna be very similar. Let's go ahead and pause the video and try it out. So this is very, very similar to what we have seen. Okay, so you go ahead and do the same thing. Remember those holes exist if you have 
the same factor, the same parentheses, exactly the same in the top and in the bottom. So go ahead and pause that and give it a try. So I got my factor form um, and I can find my x intercepts. Very simple, x equals zero. Very simple because I got that my x intercepts are right here and x squared equals zero. Y intercepts, I go ahead and substitute, right? Evaluate it for f of zero, substitute x equals zero into every term. So it's zero squared, uh, zero plus three times zero minus three. So it's zero divided by some number, uh, negative nine, right? It's still zero. Zero pizzas divided by nine people. So y equals zero. So we plot that right over here. Okay, are there any holes? Do you see any of these x plus threes on the numerator or any of the x squares on the denominator? Hopefully not because there is none. Vertical asymptotes are found from the denominator. So right here and right here. We solve for x, x equals negative three, x equals three, right? If we set each one equal to zero. As you can see, this is very, very similar. This was for my students to go ahead and give themselves a try. X equals three. And where is this one? X equals negative three. Okay, horizontal asymptotes. You need to check those exponents, those degrees. I got a degree of two, I got a degree of two. So this is a case where N equals M and then my a's and my b's are both ones, right? Because there's nothing in front of these values. So my y equals one. Horizontal asymptote at y equals one. Okay, awesome. So go ahead and uh, make sure you try this out. Um, you're trying to look at where the function is a negative or positive. So let's pick uh, a different value let's pick uh, Let's say x equals negative 500 and x equals 500. And I know what you're thinking, like, Pacina, why am I doing these huge numbers? Well, keep in mind, guys, I don't want the value. I want the sign. So if I get negative 500 and I substitute it, whether it is the factored form or the original one, uh, they'll both give you the same thing. Um, so. We're going to go ahead and see that this is going to be, uh, let's try this one since the last time we tried the other one. So it's going to be x squared, x plus 3, x minus 3. So I got negative 500 squared. It's positive, right? And then I got negative 500 plus 3 and negative 500 minus 3. Okay, so the top is positive. Then this is a negative, right? And this right here is still a negative. So I got negative times negative, still positive in the denominator. So this should still be positive, right? Because these are all the positive y's. Then we have that this went up and it came back over here. And a lot of students are very good at seeing these patterns. And they're going to be like, oh, it's just going to go ahead and continue right here. Well, that is a very educated guess. I agree with you. Um, but you can always do the, the substitution x equals 500 and you can see that you can have a positive on top and then up a positive times a positive and all of this will be positives awesome right okay so the last but not least is these right here the domain um and that is uh, from negative infinity my back and laptop is i uh, from to negative three union right Union negative three, two, three, union three, two infinities. And the range is from negative infinity all the way up to the highest this graph went was uh, zero in my y, and then it continued from one all the way to infinity. So hopefully this helped um, in graphing these. Uh, we'll be talking about this more tomorrow as well. Okay. Um, I did go ahead and give you some very, very similar examples on your digital notebook, uh, but give them a try. Uh, very, very similar stuff. And the exit ticket is on your assignments tab, and it's very similar to what we've been doing. Um, keep in mind, look for our domain and range. I think, feel like that's something that's tough, 
But other than that, I think we have it under control. Alrighty. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure, and thank you.